in a, in a postseason game. What's what's the magic? What's the key? Uh, special players. You know, there's there's a couple things, and we talked about it last night. As I told the players, that I've been very fortunate and very blessed to be. This is my 17th bowl game as a coach, and um, we were 12 and four coming into them, and having the opportunity. Uh, to learn from guys like Bobby Bowden, to learn from guys like Lou Holtz, the two mentors, obviously, that I've had the opportunity to coach under. Uh, learned a lot of very valuable lessons that you kind of put into your, you know, put into your, your bank, so to speak, than you draw from. And then I've had really special, special players. I mean, I look at these two guys are just young players, and I could tell the story of a Meek Robertson that, I promised him I'd give him number one in recruiting. And I told him that when he got there, I said, you know what, Amik, I had 30 guys on this team request number one, and I just don't think I can give it to you as a freshman. I think that I know I promised it to you. I'll hold true to that, but I'm going to make you earn it. And you're going to need to go prove that you deserve number one on the field. And he was sitting like this, and he said, I like that, coach. I like that. I'm going to earn it. I said, well, super. So a week ago, I said, you know, Meek, we're getting into recruiting again. Everybody's asking for one. So uh, I just want to know if you want it. And he said, you know, Coach, number eight's a senior, too. I've been eyeballing that one. I said, you get to pick yours, pal. When you play the way you do, you get to pick your number. Uh, I've just had – I've been blessed. Great players, uh, fantastic coaches. Today was signing date. We put 13 players, signed national letter of intents to be part of the future here. Some great, great players, extremely talented. Uh, we've got young football players. We started – what, two seniors on offense, I think it was what it was tonight. Two seniors on offense, one, two, three, and four seniors on defense. So when you look at this football team, they're very young. Uh, but they are competitive, and they play together. And I just, like I said, I've just really been blessed to have some very special players. Coach, could you talk a little bit about defense coordinator Blake Baker and, uh, you know, the job he's done? He's done an unbelievable job. The game plan that we put together, uh, the game plan that the, the, um, him, Coach Curtis, <clears throat> Coach Gothy, Coach Petrie put together on the defensive side of the ball, I thought was excellent. I think defensively, we have gotten better the entire year. These young corners keep growing up. Legereus Sneed and Meek Robertson. Um, I, I look at Davon Washington, who was a walk-on, who is now a starting linebacker for us. And we've been able to get some people healthy. Guys like Russell Ferris have missed a lot of reps. Candy has missed reps. Jalen Ferguson has missed reps. Legereus Sneed, Cedric Cooper, all those guys have missed games this year, and that's what made it so frustrating. This is as healthy as we were, and I thought the defensive staff put together an incredible plan, and then I thought the players really bought in. I think the defense got mad at me because I told them, I said, you know what, we can't ask just the defense to stop SMU. Uh, they're a top 10 high-scoring offense, and we can't put it all on them. And they all kind of sat back in the team meeting room like, what do you mean you can't put it on us? I mean, I think they took offense to it, and they were motivated, they were challenged, and I thought Blake Baker and the defensive staff has done an incredible job when you look at where we were a year ago defensively. We were one of the worst in the country. And to where we have grown with a lot of young players, the adjustments that they made as a staff, and the players that we added with guys like Amik, uh, I think has been – it's been a great formula, and with everybody coming back, hopefully we can hold this team together. Hi, Coach. Um, momentum is such a big part of football, and you it is. guys had momentum coming into this bowl game. And once you grasp, grasp momentum in this game, y'all just never let it go. The turnovers were just flowing. It kind of runs in bunches, doesn't it? It certainly did tonight. Uh, it certainly did. Uh, turnovers are such a big part of winning and losing. I mean, and you look at this game statistically – Okay, yards, we gained a couple more. You know what I mean? You look, but you look at the turnover battle, and I think a big part of that, Jamar not having any offensively. We didn't have a turnover tonight. And then defensively, what we were able to create. Um, when you get some pressure on the quarterback the way our defensive front did today, and the quarterback has to get rid of the ball, I don't know what our number of sacks were, but I thought it was a total team effort, four sacks, six turnovers. thought it was a total team effort with the pressure up front 
and then the skies and the coverage, and those guys are starting to get better and better at playing zone coverage. It was not a big man game. When you look at the weapons that they have with two draft pick receivers and all the weapons that they've put up, uh, the whole mindset was keep the ball in front of us, make them snap it again, and I thought a, a healthy defense. Boy, it was, it was fun to watch those guys run around and play. You know, I, I put the, the brakes on a little bit offensively. You know, we came out in the second half and said we want to run the ball. We want long drives. Let's not go three and out. Let's eat clock, slow down the game, burn it up. You know, we only scored six points our first two possessions, but I think it was two five-minute drives in the third quarter that got done what we wanted to get done. And, and then those players, they just kept, they kept their foot on the gas the entire time. Yes, um, I was just looking at. I was looking at how do you win? You know, how do you find a way to win the game? And um, boy, offensively in the whole first half, oh my gosh, I don't know that we were on the bad side of the fifty. I don't think we were ever in negative field position with the turnover, the special teams, the kickoff return when they did score. Jaquise Dancy answers that. I don't think we had a snap at that end of the field uh, when we were backed up. I think maybe it was one or two in the first half, but uh, we were talking about deep shots and throwing deep ball. We never had any room. Uh, not that it was a problem we were complaining about. And offensively, we were able to convert. Some guys stepped up, Teddy Field, Jamar Smith, Cam McKnight's catching the end zone. Some guys really stepped up, made some huge plays. Boston Scott had some phenomenal runs early in that game, uh, even though he didn't rush for thousand yards in this game I thought he was really pretty special as well uh, coach I'll ask you kind of the same question I asked to Meek. where does uh, how does his season compare to your expectations of uh, when he came in I would be lying if I said we expected that uh, what he did for us this year the guy's Coming into this game, I think he, he led us in interceptions. He was third in the team in, sack, in, in tackles. He was second in the team in sacks. He was third in tackles for a loss. And he's a true freshman. Um, and really, he got his opportunity because we had a couple injuries early. Mike Sam got injured. He was supposed to be a junior college player. He was supposed to be a starting corner. And when Amit got his opportunity to get in that arena, he proved it wasn't too big for him early in the season. And uh, he thrived in it. And he just kept getting better and better. I think he's a he is a special competitor. There's a lot of people that maybe height, weight, speed, a lot of maybe bigger schools looked at him and said, well, you know what, he's not big enough to play the game. But in recruiting, you can't measure a young man's heart and that man's competitive nature. I said it before, I think he's one of the best competitors that I've ever had the opportunity to coach. Uh, I asked him this week, we were standing outside, or asked him before we came in here, he said, Coach, I got to go home. I got to go Christmas shopping. I got to get a haircut. I got to get. I said, You didn't go to the mall when you were here? He said, Coach, I stayed in my room the whole week. I said, Why? He said, I got to stay focused. I got to stay. I got to stay focused. I mean, that guy is one way. He's got a one way drive. He wants to be great. Uh, and he is pretty. He's a, he's a great young man, but he's a really special player. Coach, leading up to this game, you and a lot of the players have said you haven't put together a complete game yet. Would you say this would be fair to the first game of the season that you had a complete game, or was this the best game you guys had this year? I would say the first half was the most complete game. I certainly um, was frustrated with the way we were able to run the ball in the second half. I mean, they were putting everybody up in there. You knew it was coming. I didn't think we – we didn't finish the game as strong as I would have liked as an offense, but – Coach Todd Fitch talked about that was one of the one of the big pushes is let's try and play a complete game. We didn't turn the ball over. Uh, I thought offense, defense, special teams together. Uh, I thought they really complemented each other tonight. They played we played very well as a team. Our players were really focused and dialed in. Um, but it was it was pretty close to one of the most complete games we played. But as a coach, you're never satisfied. I. I would have liked to think at halftime our running backs averaged 3.2 and 3.4. Uh, we weren't running the ball as consistent as we would like, but we were able to convert some big plays in the passing game. Um, but I kind of took their fun away from the receivers and quarterback in the second half. So uh, proud of this team, really proud of this team. 
There's a lot of people that looked at him four and six that thought, you know what, what's the matter? What's broke? What's wrong? What happened to him? I mean, this is a team that lost to an eight and four South Carolina team where they scored to have the lead with 50 seconds to go and gave up a Hail Mary, you know, to lose a football game. Uh, had a field goal blocked on the last play of the game from the 10 yard line uh, in a close football game. We just, this team, they never gave up. They just continued to compete, and a lot of people thought, what's wrong with them? What happened? Um, but boy, they never quit on each other. And I thought that was really obvious tonight, and the way they finished this season as strong as they did. You mentioned signing a class earlier today and then playing a bowl game. What, uh, what do you think of having that in the middle of bowl season and, and having not gone through it for the first time? Um, you know, A, it was, there's not a, there wasn't a blueprint. You know, it's not like, hey, pull out the book that says bowl game and signing day on the same day. Uh, there really wasn't a blueprint for it. It took a coordinated effort for a lot of people, our sports information office, our compliance team that was back in Ruston, um, our recruiting office, our coaches. Uh, you know, recruiting's changed. You walk into the war room this morning, which was built for signing date. There's 10 people on laptops, graphics, uh, tweets, social media, uh, getting everything confirmed, phone calls ringing, players calling in, everybody passing them around, talking to them. Recruiting's an exhausting day. Uh, it is, signing day is an exhausting day. And normally on Wednesday, you go home after signing day and go, thank goodness, I'm going to go sleep for a week. You know, we got done at 10.30. Uh, from 7 to 10.30, we handled the text and all the social media and signing date. And then we started our walkthroughs with our team and our meetings with our team and getting them ready mentally to play this game. And I cannot compliment this coaching staff enough for the job that they did recruiting, building relationships. There are some special, special players in that recruiting class that are going to have an, an opportunity to come in and make an impact. And I just, oh, the job that these guys do, they're tireless. They work at it. The, the, the relationship we have in that room, there's no selfishness. It's not about who signs them. They group recruit. They group evaluate. Uh, we just said we got, a, we got a really special team right now. I'm just really proud of the way that they've all come together and what they're doing. But it was pulled off by a, a team of about, you know, probably 50 people to pull it all off. Pretty, pretty unique day. Um, do I think they should change it? No, I think, I mean, there were 13 guys that signed today. Nine of them been com have been committed since the summer. Those nine guys have said all along, this is where I want to come to school. I want to go to Louisiana Tech. They sign early. Their status changes. Their signees. They can get playbooks. They can start learning the offense and defense. They all want to contribute early. They take all the guesswork out of it. I, I personally, even as one of two teams that had to deal with it on game day, I still think the early signing period is a very positive thing. If young men don't want to sign, they can wait until February. But for those that know where they're going and their families want to end it and they want to go enjoy their holidays and say, this is where I'm going to school, uh, I think it's a positive thing. I think it's a good move for a lot of these players uh, that they can put all that to bed. Again, thank everybody from Sean for the town of Frisco, uh, the Hunt family, DXL. Uh, thank you very much for having us. Honored to be here.